Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and in this series of videos we are working on the assigned homework problems from the digital study guide for chapter 8, um, the short exercises. Uh, note, accounting is about understanding the concepts and then applying that understanding to the situation at hand. If you get the application aspect wrong, that is one thing and is easily remedied by watching someone else work the problem. However, if you don't understand the concepts, that is a whole other thing. Watching a problem worked out will not help if you do not understand the underlying concepts. Go back and study the text material again and watch the theory videos. If you still don't understand the concepts, then either email or telephone an instructor to get help with that understanding. Okay, so in this um, video, we are picking up where we left off with problem 8-12. Let me get my pen. All right, there we go. So the disposition of long-term assets. Top Flight Airways purchased a baggage handling truck for $64,000. Suppose Top Flight Airways sold the truck on December 31st for $42,000 in cash. After using the truck for three full years and accumulating depreciation of $27,000, make the journal entry to record Top Flight Airways sale of the truck. Okay, so. Um, they they're selling the truck for forty two thousand. Okay, now the question is, what's the book value, All right? Well, the book value um, is, and I'm just going to call it truck, and this is what it would look like on your, uh, you know, on your trial balance. I mean, you'd have your balances in your trial balance, or if, you know, you created a, a financial statement, you'd have. 64,000 it was the purchase of the truck and then you'd have less the accumulated depreciation um, which would be 42,000 okay so so less the depreciation which means you would have um, oops I'm sorry not 42,000 geez 27,000, 27,000, which means the uh, book value of the truck would be uh, 37,000. Okay. So you're going to subtract the 37,000 from the purchase price of 42,000 and you end up with a $5,000 gain on the sale of that truck because the book value is 37. You know, that's what we value the, the truck at then we're selling it for 42 so what's the journal entry that we make well we're going to receive cash so we're debiting our cash for 42,000 and we have to get rid of the accumulated depreciation all right so we're going to debit accumulated depreciation truck whatever that uh, account is for the 27,000. Now remember that the normal balance in this uh, accumulated depreciation account is a credit. It's a contra account to the truck account, right? The truck account on your balance sheet is a debit and the accumulated depreciation account is a credit. So we have to get rid of those two accounts. We have to make those balances zero. So the opposite of the accumulated depreciation, since it's a credit, means we have to debit it. That also means for the truck, we have since it's a debit, we have to credit the truck for um, sixty-four thousand. And then um, the easy way to think about this is, well, how do I account for the additional five thousand? Well, it's simply a matter of you know adding up your debits and and your credits, okay, subtracting one from the other. And in this, a gain ends up being a credit. So the gain on sale of truck will end up being $5,000. And that's um, the journal entry to uh, take the, uh, this, the selling of the asset off of uh, your accounts. All right. It's as simple as that, right? Know what your purchase price is, 
figure out what your book value is, subtract one from the other, whether that's a gain or a loss, and then make the reversal of those entries for that asset so that the balances in those accounts are zero, okay? What you're doing there and you're doing there. Whatever you get, right? If you went through the steps that were in the book or talked about in the theory videos, you know, what do you get? What do you give up? And then you book the difference between the two, okay? All right, next problem. Uh, goodwill, all right? When one media company buys another, Goodwill is often the most costly asset acquired. Okay. TXL Publishing paid 925000 to acquire the Thrifty Nickel, a weekly advertising paper. At the time of the acquisition, the Thrifty Nickel's balance sheet reported total assets of $1,150,000 and liabilities of 375000 the fair market value of Nichols' assets was $1,225,000. The fair market value of liabilities was $375,000. How much goodwill did uh, TXL purchase as part of the acquisition? And journalize the acquisition. Okay, so basically the thinking here, even though we're talking about goodwill, uh, it, this, it's the same thinking that, we're thinking that we just did with the sale of an asset. Because what are we doing? You know, we are selling an asset. We're selling the business. Okay, so if you have here where we're selling a truck, okay, if we're, we're selling the truck, you know, that's just one asset. And you're talking about recording the gain or loss. Okay, but here when we're talking about goodwill, okay, we're talking about selling the business, okay, and instead of recording a gain or loss, right, what we're talking about is recording the goodwill, right? So the idea here is, since we're selling a business, we're, you know, we're kind of like thinking about, for lack of a better term, the book value or, which is, which is more appropriate, the net worth of the business. Okay. And the net worth of the business, if you look at your accounting equation, is assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. Okay. Well, if you take your ass, you know, if we want to know what our equity is, our net worth, you know, we have our assets minus our liabilities equal our equity. Okay. I mean, this is something you learned, you know, back in math, and you also learned in the beginning of this uh, uh, textbook. So. Um, what we want to do is we need to calculate what our net worth is, and then um, we have the sales price, right? What we and if you go by the steps that were presented in the theory videos or in the text, you know what do we get? You know whatever we're, where our sales price is, you know, um, and then what do we give up? Our net worth, and the difference between the two is our goodwill, right? So that's it in theory. So let's just work it all out here. Okay, so um, let's see here. It's uh, TXL Publishing paid 925000 So that's what, what they're getting, okay? Um, at the time of the acquisition, the... Thrifty Nichols balance sheet reported assets of 100 and uh, 1,150,000 and liabilities of 375,000. Okay, the fair market value of the assets was 125, uh, 1,225,000. So we're looking at the fair market value. We're not taking the actual book value of the the assets, okay? So if I have the, um, if the fair market value is 1,225,000, okay? And then we take, you know, that's our assets. And then we take away our liabilities, right? Which in this case is, um, the fair market value of the liabilities is 375,000. 
Okay. So in essence, the market value of the assets is 850,000, right? Because we're subtracting that out, right? So we have 850,000. And we're subtracting that fair market from the purchase price of 925,000. So our goodwill ends up being 75,000. Okay? So that is what we come up with. All right, so our goodwill ends up being 75,000. Now notice that you know our, our actual books show our assets the book value of 1,150,000. We're not using that number. We use our fair market value. And the fair market value of the liabilities generally is the same, uh, should be the, the same exact thing, okay? I mean, it isn't, it's not to say that it can't be the same thing. Um, I mean, you can discount, uh, you know, liabilities, but you know, if I'm like, if you, if I, if I'm a bank and I lend you money, okay, say a hundred thousand, you know, I'm not going to discount it. I want my whole hundred thousand, okay? Um, so generally, the fair market value is is generally what it is on your actual books, but. You know, uh, as part of the, you know, what would increase the goodwill is somebody saying, okay, instead of a hundred thousand, ah, I'll let you off, you know, and only, you know, I only want twenty-five thousand. Well, you just increase your goodwill by seventy-five thousand, right? But generally, that doesn't happen. Just be aware that it can happen, but it's a, you know, it's an aberration because nobody want, you know, I want to get paid what I'm actually, you know, I actually, you know, you you owe me, okay? All right. So as far as the um, as far as the journal entry is concerned, right, um, we want to debit our assets for a million two hundred twenty-five thousand. Um, you know, we have so that's a debit. Um, we have a credit for our liabilities, and that's three hundred seventy-five thousand. We have a debit to cash, I'm sorry, a credit to cash for 925,000. And we have a, our, oops, let me get these in the right spot. 375 and 925. And of course, um, the difference between the two is a debit to goodwill for the seventy-five thousand. Now remember, this is um, you know the transaction from TLX Publishing's perspective. Okay, they're paying the nine hundred twenty-five thousand in order to acquire uh, the. Uh, thrifty nickel okay so this is what it would look like on uh, TXL publishing's books um, the entry to the thrifty nickel you know um, since they're going out of business uh, that entry is very very different and it's beyond the scope of this exercise or what you're learning at this point in time um, and so basically you know, think of it from the perspective of um, a small business. You know, they're going to go out of business. Why do they care about what their book's like? Okay. I mean, sure, they, they need to do taxes and stuff like this. Um, and yeah, they can close out their books appropriately, but we don't have all the information that we need in order to be able to close the Thrifty Nichols books. Just realize that they'd get an influx of 925000 in cash, so they'd have a debit to their cash, but now all of a sudden all of their assets would be, you know, uh, reduced to zero, all of the liabilities would be re reduced to zero, and uh, the difference, you know, ends up in their equity, okay? So um, that's it for this problem. If you, you know, it's very, very similar to dispo Doing goodwill is, is very similar to disposing of an asset itself, except instead of calling it a gain or loss, they call it goodwill. And we use goodwill when you're, you know, you're buying a complete business. Okay, so 
that's it, and I'll see you in the next video. If you didn't understand something, you know, rewind, uh, pause, rewind the, the video, watch it again. Go back and watch the theory videos um, about Goodwill. And if you still don't understand something, feel free to contact an instructor.